Assalamualaikum everyone. Good morning. And today is uh, June 27th, 2021. Uh, welcome to Wall Street to Bay Street, Sunday Chai with Sherry Portfolio Canada, where we talk about the top events happening in the markets this past week. My name is Nadim Mian. And I'm Shamil. Get your chai ready and let's get rolling. So we want to start off by, you know, looking at how the markets have done and performed over this last week. The Dow Jones up 3%, the S&P up 2.3%, the TSX up 0.4%, and the NASDAQ up 2%. So overall, a pretty good week for the markets. And, you know, Nadim, let me pass it back to you here. Uh, do you have any comments on how the market has performed over the past week? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the S&P 500 uh, did rise to an all-time high uh, on Friday. Uh, you know, we, we saw really a broad-based rally uh, that, that initially kind of started off with uh, the technology sector in the first part of the week uh, uh, performing, and the tech sector has not has, has, has been one of those sectors that hasn't been the best performing sector. So, uh, and then that was kind of followed up in, in the second part of the week where we saw a lot of, where we saw the Dow actually make a, a, a outperforming. And so a lot of the cyclical value names, some of the Industrial names uh, had, you know, closed up the week pretty strong. Um, you know, a lot of news flow was was out there. Of course, uh, you know, the bank shares also did well. Uh, you know, the Federal Reserve announced that the banking industry could easily withstand a severe recession, um, and you know, the Fed is is releasing some of the results of the annual stress test, and they did find that uh, twenty three institutions in twenty twenty one. Uh, uh, remain well above the minimum required capital levels. So, uh, you know, bank, just just giving, uh, you know, some comments that, you know, the, some of the, the banking sector was somewhat on, on strong footing. So it, it, overall, it was a broad-based rally. We saw also uh, Nike report earnings. Uh, the stock was up about 15.5%. Uh, for the day of the announcement, and Nike is a part of the Dow component. Uh, the company released earnings and revenue. They, it blew past the Wall Street estimates. And so, you know, just generally speaking, uh, you know, uh, overall a really good week. For the market. Awesome. So, you know, kind of added on to that, we saw, you know, a deal with Biden in the infrastructure. Uh, could you maybe talk about a little more about that and you know, how it impacted the markets? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, you know, coincidentally, uh, Biden did make an announcement outside the White House. Uh, and, you know, on that announcement, we did see a lot of those industrial names and some of the cyclical names uh, rally. And, and this, I mean, you know, basically what he announced was a, a, a $1.2 trillion uh, spending over the past, over the next eight years. Um, initially, you know, back in March, uh, that number was actually at about 2.25 trillion, and that's when, when at that time, when Biden, Biden unveiled the infrastructure plan. So uh, it is obviously much less than what was initially unveiled back in March. But nonetheless, um, you know, I guess you could say that uh, uh, when nobody's 100% happy, it, because it was a bipartisan bill, um, and uh, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done. It does still have to go through Congress, but. Uh, overall, as far as some of the details of the plan, there, you know, it's been reporting that, you know, 109 billion is going to roads, bridges, and just infrastructure, uh, 140 billion in transportation, 128 billion in water and power, uh, and about 65 billion in broadband services. So, uh, you know, all, all these numbers obviously boded well for some of those old economy, old names such as industrials and. Um, you know, utilities even. Uh, so that, I mean, yeah, so that, and that, like I said, it did help some of the cyclical value names towards the second half of the week. Awesome. That's, that's great to hear. And I guess the last topic we have on, on deck here is, you know, there's been a lot of buzz about oil in general. I know a lot of people, it's one of their favorite things to talk about. So why don't you kind of shed some light on that as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so oil did post a, a, a fifth weekly gain. Um, and, you know, it was uh, it basically oil, oil futures in New York, the WTI rose 3.4%. That, that's been the highest level since October of 2018. Um, you know, that, that is the West Texas intermediate for August delivery. Uh, you know, it, the closing price was actually $74.05 a barrel. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of news still around oil. OPEC plus does meet. Uh, this next week, 
Um, you know, the, you know, oil t always tends to be a demand and supply issue, and and what demand really is, is, is showing us is that you know some of the demand is coming back to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, with uh, obviously with the opening up of the economy, people you know kind of getting back to driving and so forth. And as far as the supply, what we're starting to see is you know um, some of the stockpiles and the inventories that have been in oil um, are uh, you know are obviously being used up. And uh, you know with the OPEC plus kind of meeting for this week, the markets obviously going to take a look and see you know are they going to uh, flood the market as they previously done in, in previous years. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the view or the consensus out there. And if that's the case, that's obviously a positive. And the last thing, uh, you know, the, the Iran nuclear talks uh, seem to be dragging on. Uh, there's obviously, you know, uh, if, if that, that's something that if uh, would obviously help the supply side if there was a deal and Iran oil was put out to the, uh, there to the market. Um, so overall, like oil has obviously been in the headlines. Um, a number of Wall Street uh, firms, analysts have, you know, came out this week with, uh, with target prices. Bank, uh, bank, the Bank of America energy analysts uh, put a hundred dollar target price on oil. Um, previously, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs had an eighty dollar target price, saying that they could probably see eighty dollars hit in the third quarter of this year. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, generally speaking, it's been a pretty good run for oil, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens uh, in the coming week. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if, you know, they can continue going forward as well. But yeah, that's kind of all the topics we had. So, you know, thank you guys for joining us and we hope you found this informative and helpful. Uh, you can always book an appointment with myself or Nadeem uh, with the link below. And if you do have any other questions, you know, feel free to put them in the comments below and we can answer them on next week's episode. So thank you again for joining us and Asalaamu As Alaikum. Nadeem Mian, Portfolio Manager, registered as an advising representative, and Shamil Devji, Financial Advisor, registered as a dealing representative with Sharia Portfolio Canada, Inc. A Portfolio Manager registered in the provinces of Ontario, British Columbia, and Alberta. Their opinions and statements expressed in the show are their personal opinions and do not necessarily reflect those of Sharia Portfolio. They are effective as of the date of this broadcast only and are subject to change. This discussion is for general information purposes only and is not investment advice.